Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Safran and this is Kiko News. Now don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest in economic news. This week on Chart This with Gary Wagner, we're analyzing the latest trends and technical patterns in gold, silver, and we'll also touch base on oil. Now gold has shown stability around the 2170 mark and the market sentiment is now net long, indicating a bullish outlook. Silver trading near $25. It's been riding a high on the industrial demand. Well, we'll explore silver's technical analysis, focusing on its recent highs and factors influencing its demand. As for oil, crude sitting around $83 per barrel on the price action. The market has been disrupted by geopolitical tensions, OPEC production strategies, and of course, logistical disruptions in the Red Sea, leading to a tight supply scenario that has driven prices upward. Gary Wagner, our resident chartist, joining us from sunny Hawaii. Gary, thanks for coming on. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, let's talk a little bit and start over to gold. Last week, you charted out a new base level. Let's get into this. I believe it was 2150. We're just past that mark. Let's get to the chart. What's happening today and what can we expect this week? Well, we are looking at a daily chart. And as you can see, we had a major breakout four trading days ago. And since then, we had a couple of down days, both Thursday as well as Friday. Today, we have a market that is slightly higher. We have a higher low, but not a higher high yet. In terms of a candlestick pattern, it is simply called a bullish harami. Harami is the analogous Western trading pattern called an inside trading day. It is significant, but not the strongest of key reversal patterns. Also, as you pointed out correctly, we've seen very, very strong support, 2170. But when you look at a couple of lows, and um, when I put my pointer over there, you'll see, but we've got a couple of lows that came in right here, here, and here that did not break 2150. And to me, that's exceedingly important, and that's these right here. Now, today... We do have an up day. We're up, what, about six, seven dollars on the day, but the high also is significant. I would say that what we are seeing is fundamentally driven on optimism about the Federal Reserve beginning rate cuts in June, latest July. And that's because we had some bullish comments come out of the Fed very recently. Yeah, interesting. I mean, as we wait and see what the Fed has to say and obviously announce some cutting of the rates. I'm curious, pull out a little bit here, Gary. I mean, we saw a little bit of a sell-off, even despite central banks buying, picking up record levels. So talk to me a little bit about the short term here. Where do you think gold is going and what indicators are you looking at for, for April? Well, what I'm looking at is we have this high that came in beginning of December, uh, 2171. And then we had a long protracted correction down to just about $2,000. That's where gold found support. And then we had really the parabolic run up. And really what we've seen over the last week and a half, 10 trading days or so, eight trading days, is what we call a sideways market, which simply means that prices have been consolidating as traders reassess all of the factors that they're looking at to whether they want to be bullish, bearish, or neutral. Obviously today, we're seeing the first signs of a bullish momentum return. That's why it is trading higher. And when you think about it, on Thursday, we hit a new record high. It, it's almost getting to be old news to say that. But this one was at $2,225.30. That is this high right here. And that is absolutely significant because that is going to be the new level of resistance if traders move gold substantially higher. They're going to move it higher. And this is possibly where they would look, the short-term traders would look to pull profits because we've never seen it in this territory. Also, what is important is actual closes in the market. And that comes in at around a 2190. And so those are the areas that we want to look at for potential resistance. A breakout above, let's say, 2190 is significant. And of course, 2200, because it's a key uh, century mark, I like to call it, those round numbers. And this new high that we got last Thursday is exceedingly strong in my book because it shows us that there is the ability 
to traders to really push the envelope in terms of gold and take it to areas it has never been before. And Jeremy, that's really exciting for gold traders such as myself. Yeah, no, I bet. I mean, in the past month, it's been such an interesting market to follow. Uh, you know, we were just talking about all-time highs. This has happened a couple of times since we've had the segment going. Considering the potential for a new all-time high, you know, I'm curious what factors or events could disrupt this bullish trend for gold. Like, should we be watching the U.S. dollar here? Well, the dollar has been significant. When we look at the sell-off that occurred on Thursday and Friday of last week, First of all, Thursday was when it hit that all-time record high, and at the same time, it closed lower on the day. That was followed by a down day in gold on Friday. On both of those days, it was almost all uh, dollar strength that took gold lower. In other words, there wasn't a lot of buying or selling to sway the market one way or the other. And the because we pair gold against the dollar, it's absolutely significant. And the fact that we saw the down days, meaning Friday and Thursday, a result really of almost all dollar strength, it tells us that traders didn't have enough momentum to overtake that dollar strength. And so the dollar is significant. The other things we want to look at, of course, is geopolitical tension, whether it's on an upswing or a downtick. The things that would take gold off of running back to new highs is obviously if the Federal Reserve came out and said, well, we're not going to cut rates early, we won't do it towards the end of the year, or rather than three or two cuts, we're only going to cut it once, that would be significant because I think that the moves we're going to see this week are going to be fueled by optimism regarding the Federal Reserve and upcoming cuts. So geopolitical tension, if peace is struck anywhere in the world where there is a conflict, that will work against gold because gold always has served two functions. When there's instability, geopolitical tension, um, that tends to move gold higher. And when there's peace, which is what we all hope for, that tends to be a negative input for gold. And the other thing is the optimism about rate cuts, because yeah. higher interest rates are something that is in, intrinsically bearish for gold because gold doesn't yield anything. So when you can get 4 or 5% in a guaranteed fixed income, gold is not as attractive as when it's sitting around 1% or 2% or a half a percent the way that it was before they started raising rates. And I, don't, I think the last rate cut came around 2021, so it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, and of course, we'll be watching for that possible May, June. We'll see when it happens from the Fed cutting those rates. Uh, let's go back to silver here, Gary, because last week we were chatting quite a bit uh, we've seen some really strong performance out of silver, particularly driven by industrial demand in sectors like solar energy. How does this align with the technical patterns that you're observing here? Let's get into silver a little bit. Okay. We are looking at a June futures contract. The old, act the old most active contract was March. That's coming to first day notice if it hasn't already. So I'm already looking at the, the next most active month in silver. It's every three months, gold every two months. And what we can say is that although there's talks about shortages and usage, take a look at what's happened. After silver ran to just shy of $26, and that's these two candles right here, this, of course, represents today, this represents Friday, and this represents Thursday. We had down days in Thursday and Friday in gold, but look at the strength of the down day that we had on Thursday, that was about a three and a half percent drop. Friday was a much smaller drop. And today it is a red candle. It has a lower low and a lower high. The lower high is not so significant because it's close to the high that we had on Friday. But according to what traders are doing on a day to day basis, they are actively selling or liquid. They're either liquidating longs or initiating shorts. That's what we never really know. The commitment of traders report gives, of, gives us an indication, but that's got a one week lag. So the traders report that we got on Friday was from the previous Friday. So I tend to pay attention to it with a huge grain of salt, the size of a Volkswagen, so to speak, because we're knowing what those traders did a week ago. And that to me is already factored into the market. It's not as big except when we see that there are large traders with large positions 
we know which way they have to unwind them to either take right. profits or to to move into them. Right. You know, I'm I'm interested because we talked to a couple of analysts last week and they had an interesting perspective on this saying that silver could possibly outperform gold this year in terms of percentage and profit taking here. Take a look at that chart. Do you see this as an outcome? Well, you know, the one thing that silver has going for it is that on all the previous strong moves in gold where it went to new highs, silver never followed suit. The all-time record high to beat in silver is right around $50. We haven't seen that in years. I'll try to contract this chart a little bit so that you see what I'm saying. Right here is $28. This is back in 23 in May. We can go back quite some distance before we get to a move here, which is still around $30. So right. I think that the reason that analysts are saying that is that, first of all, we've got silver at about 25 with a top at around $30. That, in terms of a percentage gain, would be larger than gold, which is sitting just below a 2200 going to 2250 But silver has been an interesting metal in that it hasn't kept up with the recent record highs in gold. And in fact, it soured in that it never tried to challenge $50 since back in, I think it's uh, the middle of 2011, a long time ago. And so to me, I, I can't get exceedingly bullish about silver uh, running to areas that we haven't seen until it breaks above some key areas, most importantly, about $27 and then about $28 or $30 right here. If I look at these highs, it's $29.31. And that occurred back in March of 2022, so quite some time ago. We haven't seen technical confirmation of the statements you've just mentioned to where I can look at a chart and go, yeah, that makes sense. Right now, there's, an incon there's a differential between the statements that are expressing huge market sentiment in silver and what mm -hmm. we're seeing. Because if I look at this straightforward, it's been trapped in a narrow price range recently between on the lows 21 and on the highs about 26, 27. So to me, I'm not seeing that, but obviously I don't know what, what the larger traders are actually doing, what they have in mind, but the charts don't match up with those statements is all I can say. Right. Interesting. So maybe a potential correction here coming uh, to the silver market too. Uh, Gary, finally, I want to talk a little bit about oil. I mean, it is seeing some crazy price action, $83 a barrel. You know, the energy sector has been leading the S&P for the month of March. Oil prices have been influenced by, obviously, a variety of factors. As we mentioned, we got geopolitical tensions. We got OPEC, of course, coming to the table. Uh, curious about the technical chart. Uh, point out some elements that you're reflecting on here and, and what you're seeing. Well, I've got a daily chart of crude oil futures up, and underneath I'm looking at a template, let's call it that, of what's called a bullish three-line three strike. It's a Japanese candlestick pattern that happens after the market is in a upswing or a rally, and then it starts to trade lower for three days, and then you get this large green candle. What you want to see in this green candle, though, is the highs and closes be above this large red candle that started the downtrend three trading days ago. But nonetheless, this is a really a fairly bullish pattern. It doesn't occur that often in the markets, which is why I'm pointing it out. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, when you think about the patterns that are Japanese candlestick patterns, these were developed in the 16 and 1700s at the Dojima Rice Exchange, which tells me that there are certain givens in terms of patterns that were identified hundreds of years ago that are valid today because market sentiment, greed and traders and all of the things that move a market higher or lower are very similar to what they were in the 16 or 1700s. And that to me is fascinating. Mm -hmm. so, so you're pointing out here the market sentiment in this green, obviously quite high, quite bullish. Well, the, it is a bullish reversal pattern. Yes, it's you've had these strong... One strong down day, you've had a series of 
trading days where it had lower closes. That's why it's red. You compare the open to close. Close to close, they've, they have been lower. And then you had a recovery today. As I said, it's not a complete bullish three-line strike, only because you would need to see this green candle move up to just shy of 83, close to the top of this small green candle, or at least this red candle here. So mm -hmm. it's still significant because, as you can see, there is a similarity to a template of a bullish three-line three strike, but there are some criteria that it doesn't meet. Okay, so let's pull this out a little bit and let's compare it historically on performance. You know, what should traders be watching for in the oil market to anticipate the next big move? Well, let me go ahead and, and pull up a live chart. And um, in terms of different areas, let me just go and get this aligned here. When we look at where price is currently, which is around 81.95 crude oil, we can see that the significant top came at about $92. This was back in September of 23. Then below that is a lower top. This occurred in October of 23. From there, it traded down to these lows at about 68. We have had a slow and methodical move, call it from the beginning of the year, to higher pricing. It is significant that it moved from about $68 back above $80. So the next level we really want to see it take out is about 85. And the brass ring, so to speak, if oil continues to move higher, is about $88 a barrel and then $92 a barrel. And that is just based upon former tops. And that is what a market technician looks at for areas of support and resistance is a former bottom or a former top. And right. so those yeah. are the areas we look at. Interesting. Gary, thanks again. Obviously, it's important to point out that these energy costs can translate to the wallet as well with some fuel pricing and onto the consumer. So it'll be interesting to see the next economic data from the Fed. Gary Wagner joining us from Hawaii as always. Gary, thanks for coming on again today. Thanks so much for having me. It's been great. Always, always, always. And I appreciate it. I'm Jerry Saffron for Kitco News. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and go and like that button and drop us a comment below. I like to read them. We'll see you next time.